Good morning, my name is Alex Badiou and in this video I want to show you how you can create the ultimate filters menu in order to increase the user experience inside your Power BI reports. So let's get started. Inside Power BI you have a lot of options. You can have filters that are shown on the page. You can have um, navigation menus that direct you to different pages of your report. You can have dynamic uh, filters menu that can be opened and closed when clicking on specific buttons. Or you can create a fully dynamic uh, filters menu that can be opened when clicking on a button, but they can be closed when clicking around that uh, name. So how did I create this menu and how you can implement the same technique inside your reports? Let's switch to my Power BI desktop. The first thing we have to do is to open the selection pane and also the bookmarks pane. And let's open the menu that I created. You will see in the selection pane that I have a navigation menu. This navigation menu is composed of all the elements inside the dynamic menu I created. It is very important that you group together all these elements and you put them in the, descend, in the descending order. So as you can see, I have the titles, I have the filters, I have the shape, and then I have a close button. This close button, it's actually a blank uh, button. So let's create one. It's a blank button that was positioned like this without the background. So as you can see, every element that you create on the page will be created above at the top of the, the selection. So you have to double click and rename the, the element in order to be easy to understand what you are looking at. And then you have to drag it down up to the position that you find uh, necessary. Okay, let me, let me delete this last element. So the first thing to do is to group together your, uh, your elements and also give them the correct name. You will see that I also created a small uh, image that shows uh, an icon that uh, means that the filters will be uh, cleared. Okay, now as we created the menu and the buttons, we renamed the items and we grouped them together in the right order, we have to make sure that we maintain the layer order. That means that every element on this page has to have the maintain layer order on. This is very important because let's say that this shape menu does not have the maintain layer order. What will happen is that when the end user will click on this button and then it will, she or he will click on this menu, the menu shape will go above the filters. So this we do not want to happen. So this is the reason why we, we want to maintain the layer order. That means that the menu will be always under the other elements of the menu. And it's the same case for the uh, blank button that closes, that will close the menu, that has to be under our shape. And the last thing we have to do in order to set up our dynamic menu is to create bookmarks. So we will click on the menu, uh, we will click on the, on the navigation button, we will make it visible, and we will create a bookmark. This bookmark, we will call it, let's say, navigation open, because our menu is open. We will click then on more options, and we will see that we have data, display, current page, and all visuals by default selected. We do not want to have all these options selected. We do not want to have, for example, data selected. Why is that? If we have data selected, and the end user will select another filter on the page, let's say all dates, 
when he or she will open the menu, if the data is selected, the, uh, the selection the end user did will not be visible on the screen. So we do not want that. We do not want to have data selected. We do not want to have all visuals selected either. We want to have only the navigation menu that is open. So we will click on navigation. We will click on navigation open and we will say that for the selected visuals on the current page, uh, we want to display this menu. Okay. Now we want to give an action to this button. So this button is also a blank uh, button that has an action to go to the, let's say, navigation open, the bookmark we just created. So when we create this, you can see that the menu opens. And if we, if we close, if we choose last six months, you can see that the menu and the page is changing. So let me change some options here. And when I click on the menu, I can see that all the selections I did before are still there. Okay, this is the, the first bookmark. The second bookmark that you want to, to do is the close menu. So let's create the navigation close bookmark. We will go to add bookmark. We'll call, call it navigation close. We will go once again on the options, but for now we will click on the navigation menu and deselect it. So now it is not visible. And when we go onto the options, we will do the same thing. We will take off data, selected visuals, and then update the selected visuals. Okay. So let's open our menu. Let's go to the navigation menu. Let's go to button close navigation and choose our navigation close. Okay. Now we can test it. We can see that we can open the menu. We can close it if we click around it. And if we click inside it, it will stay open. So our navigation is working currently just fine. So these are the steps that you need to do in order to create your navigation menu. You have to create your menu with the buttons and select them together by giving them a proper name and making sure that all the elements have maintained a layer order on. Then you have to create actions for opening the book, uh, the menu, uh, the button to reset all filters and the, the blank filter on the page and create three bookmarks. One for the navigation flyout. That means when your menu is open, you have to select the, the menu to be uh, visible, untick data, and then update. Then the navigation close that will have the same options, but with the menu that is hidden. And then the navigation receipt that will have also the data that is, uh, that is ticked because we always want to have for the menu, so the selective visuals for the menu, we want to have uh, the same view with all the filters selected to all. So this is it. I hope you find it useful and you can create the same types of menus inside your Power BI reports. Have a good day. Bye bye. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular 
tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.